Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. Stops on the music trail. Kane's Ballroom on the air again. The Bard's Classic Collection. A Rock Sanctuary. A Foodies Music Hall. And a Classic Music and Food Joint. Come with us to Discover Musical Oklahoma. Hi, I'm Lauren Nelson. Dina Lolly will be joining us a little bit later in the show. Welcome to Kane's Ballroom in Tulsa, where there are big doings tonight. We'll tell you a little bit more about that later in the show. But first, a little background on this national music industry landmark. Known as the Carnegie Hall of Western Swing, Kane's Ballroom has a long history of iconic music moments. Kane's is kind of artifact number one in terms of the, the state of Oklahoma and the music scene and what it means to, to everyone. And the fame of Kane's all started with Bob Wills and his Texas Playboys. He's in the Rock Hall of Fame as well as the Country Hall of Fame. From the time of Bob Wills' radio show broadcast to today, this ballroom has hosted some of music's top names throughout the decades. Bob Dylan, Robert Plant, um, Elvis Costello, Green Day, Luke Bryant, Chris Stapleton, 21 Pilots, Post Malone. Canes has always been this melting pot of every genre is played here and we do all kinds of things. You wake up in the morning. One of those artists is John Fulbright, a native Oklahoman and Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter. I feel like every musician that, that grows up in Oklahoma pictures themselves playing Kane's Ballroom, and, that was, and that's about as good as it gets. It, it's the epicenter of, of the state as far as uh, the history is concerned and, uh, and our musical legacy. Fulbright is a former member of the popular Turnpike Troubadours and just released his fourth album called The Liar. We're very proud of it. It seems to be, uh, it, it seems to be getting some pretty good reception. There's a song called Safe to Say toward the end, kind of a love song. It's, it's a little bit of a, I kind of tried to treat it like an Otis Redding song where it kind of starts really soft and then builds into this really big. The Canes Ballroom stage has hosted dozens of music legends and that legacy lives on today. There's a very eclectic uh, torch to be passed on and I, I do think that there is a profound respect for, uh, the, for our history as a state musically. The history is etched into the maple wood floor where generations of music lovers have enjoyed iconic live shows. Uh, someone said the other day, you're a custodian. You're like a custodian of a living museum. And, and yeah, we are. All right, thank you very much. Joining me now is our man about Tulsa, Jason Grubbs. And Jason, you can't talk about the Oklahoma music scene without mentioning the church studio. No, you sure can. In fact, Canes and the church studio are both crown jewels for Tulsa's music history. That all started back in the 70s when Leon Russell was having a meal across the street at a restaurant, looks up and sees that church for sale. We've known each other for most of our lives. Musician Brad Absher has known about Leon Russell's church studio since he was a kid. You hear about oh yeah, that was recorded at the church, and, and you just kept hearing that. And you're like, wow, well, you don't, maybe you don't have to be in Hollywood to do this. You know? <laughs> in the early 80s, Brad and his band got a chance to record in this very sanctuary, a memory he'll never forget. We were all just we were visibly shaking. So many years later, he still gets excited. Brad was the first one to record in here since the church studio's revival. You feel special when you come in here and, and when the red light comes on, it's like, boy, I gotta really, you know, you wanna do your best. It makes you, I think it, you raise your game. It was just the most wonderful feeling to have this place back because it was in pretty rough shape there for a while. The studio changed hands over the years and eventually fell in disrepair, sitting vacant for decades in desperate need of major renovations. 
I didn't have a set plan when I first bought the church studio, but after I did acquire it, it really took a life of its own. Owner Teresa Knox spent five years and a lot of money gutting, restoring, and putting this Tulsa treasure back together. Today, it's a recording studio once again, and a National Historic Landmark, one with a rich story dating back to 1915. Not only was it built by the people, but we believe it to be Tulsa's first integrated church. 11 varieties of wood were discovered during renovations, a historic message from the past. The Grace Methodist Episcopal Congregation had no formal architect or blueprints. The ladies of the church uh, would feed people chicken dinners if they were a bricklayer, if they're a mason, or they had any scrap wood. You'll find maple, red oak, white oak, um, pine. We're, we're sitting on pine wood right here. We have fir. The 11th variety of wood added was Oklahoma cedar. It was put in by Leon Russell himself. All of it saved and restored. And that was kind of a popular wood to use in a 70s recording studios because acoustically it's just a really great sound to it. That great sound has been heard around the world by millions. Leon converted the church in the 70s and during that time not only did he create here but so did people like Eric Clapton, Michael Bolton, along with Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers known as Mud Crutch back then. There's several tracks off the first Mud Crutch record that were recorded right here and you know Right where we're sitting. <laughs> Willie Nelson has recorded here, of course, Phoebe Snow, Tulsa's own Dwight Twilley. Even if they weren't recording, a lot of well-known musicians would come by to just hang out and jam. In fact, this is where Leon met his old drummer, Tulsa Gary Busey. And Gary is who introduced Leon Russell to Barbara Streisand um, during the filming of A Star is Born, which Leon uh, won uh, several awards for that soundtrack. Directly underneath the floor of the sanctuary is where a 5,000 piece archive is stored in climate controlled glass cases. All of it open to the public. We have everything from clothes and artifacts and music to um, Leon's canes. A new entry was added to the church, welcoming visitors and housing even more artifacts and art, including this portrait said to have been done by Leon himself. Not only can you sense his spirit here, you're surrounded by inspiration. After all, the building itself has always been for the soul, whether it be worship or music. It started as a church and it's still very much a church to, to, a lot of, to a lot of people. Anyone who knows Leon knows that he was a very spiritual person and so it only makes sense to me that he um, bought a church to become his recording studio. The church studio is open daily from 10 to 3. They also host live concerts and other events. So check it out at TravelOK.com slash church studio. It really is astonishing when you stop and take a look at just how much influence Oklahoma has had on a global music scene. Everything from opera to red dirt. And one easy way to learn more about all of it is through the Oklahoma Music Trail. Dino Lolly will tell us more about that coming up. I will, and Deanne Stein is joining us to talk about a newer music venue in OKC's West End. And it's one with a terrific restaurant. We'll sample the food and music coming up. And I'll take you on a tour of a new Oklahoma museum that one national music critic has called the best single artist rock museum ever. Be right back to discover more of Oklahoma. Don't go away. Warm up your winter and visit Claremore on Route 66. Experience a treasure trove of art and artifacts in our museums, including the Will Rogers Memorial and the J.M. Davis Gun Museum. Shop one-of-a-kind boutiques that never go out of style. Fill up on our famous food. Come play and stay. The fun begins in Claremore on Route 66. Don't just wish you were here. Visit Claremore with me. Visit Durant, Oklahoma, where the people are just as special as our town. From our bustling Main Street full of boutiques, stores, and recreational shops everyone can enjoy, to our wide variety of family-friendly and fine dining options. You can enjoy cultural experiences at the newly opened Choctaw Cultural Center, or tons of water recreation activities on Lake Texoma. Durant is a weekend of fun waiting to happen. Plan your next adventure at discoverdurant.com. 
We're excited to introduce our new hotel partner. Best Western of Oklahoma. With 40 locally owned locations across our state, Best Western is our go-to hotel. Give them a try the next time you're out discovering Oklahoma. Go to bestwesternoklahoma.com. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma. We're in Tulsa at the iconic Canes Ballroom where they're getting ready to record the public radio show live from Canes. Dino Lolly is checking out the OKC music scene for us and we'll hear from him shortly. But right now I've got our guy in Tulsa, Jason Grubbs, hanging out with me in the original green room here at Kane's Ballroom. Yeah, Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys used to hang out here and everybody that came after it's him. So Can you cool. imagine? It's so cool. Very cool. They actually made this place famous back in the day, the 30s and 40s, when they were doing live shows on KVOO. Well, this place is perfect for a modern day radio show right here in Tulsa. And now we're going to kick things off with our house band, the Oklahoma Specials, led by Mr. Paul Benjamin. But really the idea behind this is really tapping into Tulsa's music DNA and of course the history uh, of music that's come out of this city is incredible and to this day um, continues to be a force. Live from Canes is recorded with a live audience, so you get not only the great music, but the electric atmosphere of this iconic music hall. And in publication after publication, Canes shows up as one of those top American music venues. Radio has been a, a synonymous with the Canes since 1934 when Bob Wills and his Texas Playboys uh, hit the airwaves on KVOO and broadcast uh, their uh, radio show, Coast to Coast. So, uh, we're, we're really kind of, in a sense, um, paying homage to that radio history as well as the fact that this is an iconic live music venue in this country. As part of the show, listeners will hear from world famous musicians from our state and around the world. We're exploring the American music experience in every song and story. So we're hoping to kind of get into the stories behind the music and um, and how that helps shape the American experience. I ain't said nothing since I woke up today. You can hear the live from Kane's program they're recording here tonight on KGOU radio tomorrow, Sunday, January 29th at noon. You can find KGOU at 106.3 FM and again that's at noon tomorrow or you can be part of the audience for Live from Canes. Shows are being recorded February 19th and March 18th. Get all the details at travelok.com slash live from Canes. Jason, as you know, among all of the rock legends that have played Canes is Bob Dylan, and just a few blocks from here is a permanent collection of Dylan memorabilia that's getting rave reviews. Yeah, in fact, there's a writer over at Variety Magazine that says of all the rock museums out there, for individual artists, this one is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Videographer Brian Boone and I got the chance to rock through Tulsa's new Bob Dylan Center. Next door to the Woody Guthrie Center, you'll find one of his biggest fans, Bob Dylan. This 100-year-old paper factory is now home to the Music Legends Archives, a process that started back in 2016. Word got out from the Dylan camp that, sure enough, he had been keeping for decades uh, this trove of material. He was deciding that it was time to perhaps find a permanent home for these materials. Those materials total 100,000, covering decades of Dylan's career, one that's still going today. Visitors get a sense of who he is and how he works, a creative process seen in changes made to handwritten lyrics. And what you get to see is Dylan, like any great artist, grappling with his form. There are recordings and photographs, film clips and memorabilia. I think that we have surprises here, even for the hardcore Dylanologists who, like we on staff, had spent a lot of their waking hours listening to and thinking about Dylan. Dylan wore this jacket to the Newport Folk Festival in 1965 when he went electric. It shocked diehard fans and fellow musicians. Later, Pete Seeger sent him this postcard. And Seeger was one of the folk purists saying, what are you doing, Bob? We can't hear you. Turn that guitar down. Years later, Seeger realized, well, you were onto something there. You were, you were giving us a message, but in a, in a different medium. Among the items you'll see here at the center are things that are associated with well-known songs, like this tambourine here, associated with Dylan's Mr. Tambourine Man. You could spend days here 
Tony Mills and his sister Sally Conrath are Oklahomans, but these days, Tony lives up in Dillon's home state. Minnesota's very proud of him and consider him a native son. And I think a lot of people were wondering why this didn't wind up in Minnesota. It really starts to make sense when you realize Dylan's admiration for Guthrie. In fact, his first original track is Song to Woody. From his earliest days, he spoke so lovingly uh, and, and reverently, really, of Woody Guthrie and everything that his music meant, everything that Guthrie as a figure uh, within the culture and, and within social life uh, meant. This makes a lot of sense that they're together, really. It's actually nice being down here seeing the archives uh, so well executed and available. I was very impressed with this installation. It's a showcase of a multifaceted artist, from music to pastels, even sculpture. This one, Dylan crafted just for the center, housing more than six decades of his work. We do hope that visitors who come in, they'll learn more about Dylan, they'll uh, hopefully have a, an appreciation for a more cohesive sense of who this man and artist has been for all these years, but as well tapping into their own creative impulses and instincts. It was great. It was really, really nice. It exceeded my expectations. Just a wonderful experience. I can't recommend it enough. Yeah. The Bob Dylan Center is open Wednesday through Sunday, 10 to 6, and will be a great combo trip matched up with the church studio. Go to TravelOK.com slash Dylan Tulsa for all the Dylan deets. Coming up, we're pitching it to Dino and Deanne in OKC. Hi, Lauren and Jason. We're at a musical hotspot in OKC's West End that's also been a hit with foodies. And we can't wait to show you around. We'll be right back. Find your craft at one of more than 60 breweries bubbling up fun all across Oklahoma. Tap into our state's many award-winning craft brews from ales to stouts and everything in between. Take time to savor them in your favorite style. From rural beer gardens to high-tech urban tap rooms, you can find it all on Oklahoma's Craft Beer Trail. Download a map from craftbeerok.com and start your journey down the Oklahoma Craft Beer Trail. There are some things you just can't contain. Oklahoma Today Magazine is bursting with culture. Mind-blowing restaurants, trips, adventures, and so much more. Open your copy, then hit the open road. Unleash your curiosity. Set your spirit free. Subscribe today for only $14.95. Oklahoma Today Magazine. Break through the ordinary. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma and a special look at our state's music scene. We're at Jones Assembly in downtown OKC, which some consider the crown jewel of OKC's West End. I'm with reporter Deanne Stein. Deanne, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. So I understand that you and videographer Chris Cook sampled all that this venue has to offer, and that's a lot. It was a lot. What's great about this place is you get to enjoy the food, the live music, and the spirits all under one roof. Refined regional cuisine. Craft cocktails that will blow your mind. And heart-pounding live music. Together they check all the boxes for the owners of the Jones Assembly. We want the Jones Assembly to be a place where people walk in and just be like, wow, I never knew something like this was here. Musician Graham Colton and his partners opened the restaurant and concert venue in 2017 inside two notable buildings situated along the city's historic film row. This opened as Fred Jones Ford in 1923. All of this area is where the Model T uh, assembly took place in Oklahoma City. Using materials from the historic buildings, the 20,000 square foot space was renovated into a full service restaurant, two bars, and a spacious patio. I think it just, you know, really gives, you know, amazing bones to this building, but it really gives the whole concept heart and soul. A notion carried out by culinary genius, Chef David Gilbert. Every piece of bread here is baked fresh in a wood-fired oven every day. Um, every piece of pasta is made here. So, I mean, it's a completely for scratch uh, kitchen. His refined regional cuisine takes traditional Oklahoma dishes to a new level. A lot of hyper-focus on Oklahoma products. I mean, everything from sesame seeds, uh, down to edible flowers. They roll out at least two seasonal menus a year. Here, he's showcasing some of his fall and winter dishes. 
This is a Peruvian chicken. Ah, the Peruvian chicken. He admits became an obsession while on his travels abroad, and he says he's perfected it now for his customers. It's not just, I ordered a half chicken. It's something special, it's meaningful, and that, that same passion is put into the plate. Also on the menu, ricotta toast loaded with a fall bounty and a charred carrot salad with seasonal greens, pickled red onion, whipped ricotta, and mustard seed vinaigrette. It's approachable, but it's very unique. The menu always has a core group of fan favorites, though, like the wood-fired pizzas. The space is super nice, and, and they've got really good food and drink, and uh, they've got a kid's menu, so that's always a bonus. Now to the bar where principal bartender Charles Friedrichs is shaking up some creative craft cocktails. It's very culinary driven. Um, we make all of our own syrups, juices, house concoctions, uh, you know, infusions, etc. in house. So it's a, it's a labor of love and something that we really find special. There are 35 beers and seven cocktails on tap and more than a dozen unique drinks on the menu. We have our staples, the disco nap, Dagwell Dixie, some of those that stay year round uh, that we're known for. It's different flavors, different combinations you don't usually get. So, yeah, I mean, uh, just kind of like with the Genius Bar, it's not, you know, a very, very usual thing for me to get, you know, something with egg whites in it. Uh, but I definitely enjoy it. On concert nights, this dining room is totally transformed, collapsed and put away for some high energy entertainment. This industrial chic venue can accommodate around 1,600 people and host roughly 30 ticketed shows a year. We try to really span multiple genres of music. So we've been lucky enough to have, you know, all the way from Vince Staples to Willie Nelson. You can also catch free shows weekly highlighting local musicians. But there's so much talent here that we get to see and it's, it's become a part of our DNA to really support what we think is an already just incredible talent base. Aside from the nightlife, the Jones Assembly prides itself on remaining family friendly. They've enjoyed uh, going over and, and uh, throwing bean bags for cornhole and, and uh, just kind of exploring the space. Uh, we just love to be a place where people can really get some great food and, and drinks, hear a little bit of music and enjoy themselves. Find out how to enjoy all that food, drink, and music at TravelOK.com slash Jones Assembly. You can learn lots more about Oklahoma's outsized musical culture and heritage by following the Oklahoma Music Trail. You can find it all online at TravelOK.com slash Music Trail. There are lists of noteworthy Oklahoma music venues and artists with bios, backgrounds, and interesting Oklahoma destinations to visit. You can play your music trail adventure by ear or follow the suggested itineraries without ever leaving home. You can while away an afternoon answering trivia questions sorted by artist, venue, and genre. It's all at TravelOK.com slash music trail. Now, I love movie trivia, but again, that's kind of been my thing over the years, but I do think it would be fun to try the music trivia. Well, that's okay, because I would only be able to answer questions about 80s music, so don't even try to ask me anything from this millennium. <laughs> <laughs> but back to the show, we're not done yet. Our fourth movement takes us south on I-35 down to Ardmore. To a classic eatery where music is a regular menu item, the curtain will rise on our Discover Oklahoma music scene finale next. Growing up in such a, a rich religious home and environment, you find a lot of spirituality making its way into your lyrics. Wanna be faithful. I haven't carried everything with me from my childhood, but I think that I deal with life in a spiritual way, in a way of thinking that there's so much more than me, you know? And so I kind of live by that more so than anything. Wanna be angry, yeah. Wanna be I wanna be faithful. This segment of Discover Oklahoma is generously sponsored by Burlap Buffalo Boutique, a fun and unique one-stop shop for women's kids and baby clothing. Burlap Buffalo Boutique, voted Mustang's best gift shop. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma. We're in Tulsa at Kane's Ballroom. Yeah, we're getting ready to roll on the Live from Kane's public radio show. This time it's going to be featuring Oklahoma musician John Fulbright. But right now, we're headed down I-35 to a restaurant that has made live music a part of the draw since it opened its doors. 
Tina McGarry and videographer Brian Boone check out Two Frogs Grill in Ardmore. Well, we're not like anyone else. You know, some people call us, some people say we're kind of like the hard rock. Some people say we're kind of like House of Blues, we're this or that, but, but I disagree. Aubrey Harris and his wife Angela opened Two Frogs Grilled. Their recipe for success was simple. A catchy name, unique vibe, and a menu that boasts flavor and variety. We wanted to be a personalized rock and roll slash, you know, homemade food place, you know, and it's a, uh, with all the eclectic food we have, we wanted to be just as eclectic in the restaurant. You know, we, want, we wanted a vibe in a small town. The one-of-a-kind artwork and memorabilia set the stage. Two Frogs is edgy, but comfortable. We wanted people to walk in the door, and you, we wanted them to walk into a space where, literally, it didn't remind them of any other place, but yet it reminded them of a lot of cool places, right? Because all the you know amazing artwork, I mean, you look around the walls, most of these pictures are unpublished, okay? So although you see a lot of the bands you know on the walls, right? Most of these are only unique to Two Frogs. The menu is a potpourri of recipes collected and perfected throughout the years. Every bite is delicious. From the hand-cut steaks and catfish to Two Frogs award-winning ribs. We have a different method of cooking them, but those baby back ribs, I mean, anyone from Kansas City, Memphis, whatever, that actually, you know, do a dry rub, you know, rib, they're like, wow, these are, these are amazing. Mouthwatering appetizers, flavorful, homemade entrees, followed up with delicious desserts. Two Frogs has several signature sweets, the famous apple dumpling, pecan pie, peanut butter satin pie, and New York style cheesecake. And what kid or adult wouldn't like a giant cotton candy? Uh, heaven. And another sweet treat for music lovers. On this stage, every couple of moms, two frogs host bands. We don't just go grab a band because we want to have a band. We don't do a lot of local bands, but yet every once in a while we'll do a local band. But we really like to do some big shows with some really big name artists. And then we like to bring in some people that won't quite fill a bigger space. This smaller venue is a favorite for artists like Brett Michaels. And of course, fans love the intimate setting. With its great atmosphere and delicious food, Two Frogs is sure to be a crowd pleaser. In Ardmore, I'm Tina McGarry, Discovering Oklahoma. Two Frogs Grill is open seven days a week and is just east of I-35 in Ardmore. You can plan your visit there at TravelOK.com slash Two Frogs. Coming up next week, Route 66 with all its kicks. We'll check out the brand new Cherokee Cultural Center in Bonita, a perfect place to make a stop. We'll hear about the past and future of Catoosa's Mother Road Monument, the Blue Whale. Plus an out of this world Route 66 overnight. And an ice creamery where you can chill for a spell and savor the flavors during your Mother Road meanderings. A big thank you to all of the great folks here at Canes for providing the backdrop for our show this week. And Jason, thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me and thanks y'all for joining us. Until next time, remember, there's always something musical to discover in Oklahoma.